Walled City, written by Maressa Mortimer. Chapter 1 The rasping sound of his large hunter's knife is still audible through the gurgling waves. The knife moves up and down slowly, deliberately devouring the coracle. The round coracle is hidden in the shadows, narrowly missed by the intermittent beam of the lighthouse on a lonely stretch of coast. The night air is perfectly silent. Only the waves can be heard, spluttering on the rocks and chattering with the pebbles on the way out. Fax is exhausted. Paddling the small coracle upstream was harder than he had anticipated. A few times he had been tempted to pull over into a little cove and walk from there. But as a special operator, he knew the plan was based on good intelligence, so he had battled on. It had worried him, as time was of the essence, but finally he had rounded a bend and spotted the bright glaring beams from the lighthouse. Hax pulls a face. He hates destroying what he made. It had taken him long hours to build the coracle, which had served him well on his journey. Soon there would be nothing left. His hand burns, and he knows there will be at least one large blister on his thumb. The boat is made of willow and hazel, and the wood is tough. The tiny coracle, that hardly allowed him and his bag in, now seems never-ending. The last few pieces are finally small enough to be unrecognisable. Hax carefully slips the knife in its sheath, then struggles to stand, flexing his legs, rolling his shoulders and neck, all the while looking into the darkness beyond the lighthouse beams. In the bright beam he can see soft, undulating hills, stretching in the distance, black and dull. The surging waves behind him seem to mock him, telling him that he might have overcome them, but his mission hasn't even started. With stiff, uncooperative arms, Hax flings pieces of his coracle in the water. Some pieces he jams between rocks or in the sand. At the back of the little cove he finds a hollow, large enough to take two larger pieces. Hax groans. This is all taking too long, and the sky in the east is turning lighter. Its movements become more rushed, and a few times he half trips over his own feet, dashing around the little cove, hiding the remains of the coracle. I wasn't expecting this, a tiny voice grumbles in his mind, as Hax forces himself to keep moving. For a few seconds, Hax is tempted to agree with the grumbling voice. Then he pulls his shoulders back and head up. Of course I did! he argues back, then jumps at the sound of his own voice. He holds his breath, suddenly feeling very cold. Hack stands perfectly still, holding his breath and searches the dark shadows around him. He can feel fear right at the fringe, edging closer and closer. Hax remembers in time to take some calm, deep breaths and reminds himself that it isn't fear he's feeling, it's excitement. He rubs the back of his neck, massaging the sore muscles. That's right. Excitement and gratitude. Excitement over his new adventure and the days and weeks ahead. Gratitude that he was honoured with his calling, prepared and sent. Gratitude also that he is so close. He's past the border, past the first obstacle. He has landed at a great spot. His boat is destroyed and he is busy getting rid of the evidence. That's a lot of his list ticked off already. With renewed energy, Hax does his best to get rid of the last few pieces of light wood. The coracle won't be recognised, obviously, but neither will the type of wood he used for his coracle, so it's important to hide it all. When he is certain the task is done, he tugs at his large green Bergen rucksack, struggles into it and clips it firmly in place. The Bergen has all the earthly goods he could bring. He might be here for weeks, even months, although Hax thinks he will be home before the autumn. He is only sent to one city after all. He clambers up the steep rocky sides of the cove, carefully feeling for footholds in the dark. If he slips and loses his footing, the crash will be disastrous, especially with his heavy burden. His arms are shaking with exhaustion by the time Hax gets to the top of the cliff. Even his training and preparation haven't been enough. I wonder where else your training will let you down, the unpleasant voices taunt him in the silence. Hax clenches his fists. He himself had the same thought. But no, he must trust the training, the preparation and his calling. He is here for a reason, he has a mission to fulfil and he will do so. After all, he did make it to the top. Then Hax turns his face towards the north and his heart skips a beat when he spots the faint outline of the hill and on top of the hill the city. He straightens up and sets off, 
feeling exhilarated, renewed. Hax makes good progress, unaware of the quiet figure at the lighthouse window. <laughs>